Welcome, welcome everybody. Hello, Zori Chan, everybody. Uh, hello, so good to see you all. Or, or at least to see some yeah. names, not so many faces. You are all hiding behind your... <clears throat> but we have to wait a little bit more before we start. Okay, please put my colleague Ivana with me in the group because she will support me with the jam. Yes, yes, don't okay. worry, don't Thank worry, you. it's solved. They cannot separate, that's amazing. <laughs> and don't share our weak points with participants. No, we are doing great, Marina, don't worry. But it's nice to see we have Armenia, we have at least what I can guess. One more Armenia, Ashkan is going to join now. Ah. So welcome, welcome. So maybe maybe while we are waiting everybody to to uh, join, I would like uh, to ask you to create a, a virtual ID and for that you need to go to the bottom of the screen where, the, where it's written participants and you press on that, you find your name and then you, rename, you go to rename and then so when you open your name, you have mute and you have uh, more, you just press more, you go to rename and then you put your name, your organization, this is what I'm just doing, and the country. This is some kind of virtual ID so that it, uh, it will help us get to know each other. Hello, Portugal. Hello, Zambia. I'm just reading the chat box. <laughs> it's not difficult. So you just go there and you put name, organization, and country. Should I repeat? So you go to the bottom of, the, of your screen, press participants, find your name, press on your name, go to more, go to rename and change your name. No, not change your name, but put your name, organization and country, don't change your name. I don't know what Gemma, Gemma is going to do with us, maybe we will change names, let's see. This is a very important part for us because one of the goals and expectations of this meeting is that we will all have opportunity to meet new colleagues, to connect, to learn more about each other and maybe continue cooperation after this meeting. <laughs> we hope this meeting will last longer than these two hours. So let's wait a few more minutes. Oh, we have colleagues from Rwanda. Oh, Men's Resource Center, that's nice. I think it's a, it's a dream for a lot of us for decades to bring more men in early childhood. You can also unmute yourself and say hi if you feel like. I think we can we we can start. Do you all agree? 
I mean, I see your thumbs up. Yes. So how do you feel? Uh, uh, or, uh, let me see. Like this, like this, or like that? So I hope you will all live like <clears throat> this. Or at least like this. Oh, Koruga, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> okay, so dear colleagues, welcome to the virtual cross-country learning exchange which is focused on implementation of playful parenting programs. My name is Zorica Trikic, I'm the senior program manager at the International Step by Step Association, ISA. And today I will facilitate this meeting with my colleague, Jadna Kumelti, playful parenting initiative lead at the Lego Foundation. Jadna, can we see a small wave so that everybody knows who Gemma is. <laughs> so before we start, uh, as I ask you already, please rename yourself, your name, your country, and organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, during this, we decided to go for, uh, for a Zoom meeting, not webinar, because we really want us to talk and discuss. So you all have access to cameras and mics. And we kindly ask you to keep your camera on during the meeting and mic off when you are not talking. We can mute you, but I think it's better if you mute yourself. <laughs> uh, you can raise your hand, you can put your questions in chat or in chat box. You can, you can find the different ways how to, how to get in contact with us. So, because of this noise, I'm going to repeat my request. Keep your camera on, your mic on mute when you are not talking. Okay, now I have to mute somebody. Doesn't matter. Uh, we would like also to ask you let us be respectful to each other active and engaged throughout the meeting and this meeting is re i think you saw at the beginning that this meeting is recorded but we are also going to put it on the youtube only the main session not the small group discussions because we want people to feel to feel free to discuss in small groups so if you really do not feel comfortable uh, to see yourself on YouTube, okay, then put your screen off. Put your camera off, sorry. We have a very full agenda. For today, we are going to zoom into two critical issues connected with playful parenting program implementation. The first one is how to strengthen services and support the workforce. <clears throat> and we are going to address this question through the lenses of integrated work across sectors and also across different levels of the same sector. And the other question is how can we involve families and communities in playful parenting despite different challenging, uh, challenging circumstances. How we can motivate uh, and engage them in supporting playful parenting and nurturing care. We will start with a brief presentation of the playful parenting uh, program and initiative. And after that, we are going to have uh, the first part of the panel discussion. But in that part, we are going to talk about strengthening the services and supporting the workforce. Then we are going to go to small groups. And in small groups, we expect that you are going to share your questions, dilemmas, experiences, and successes. Something that you are proud of and that you want to, to, to celebrate and share with the others. In the second part of the, of the panel, we have the same panelists in both parts. These are our colleagues from UNICEF Serbia, UNICEF Zambia, and Aga Khan Development Unit. Uh, so when we come back from the small group, we are going to have the second part of the of the panel, and this would be at the end, that would be some kind of closing of our meeting. 
and we really do hope that you will enjoy time spending with us and that you leave this meeting inspired and enriched like this. Yeah? So let's try, start from Gemma. Gemma to Melty, Playful Parenting Initiative Lead at the Lego Foundation. So Gemma, we all agree that play is transformative for children and that play allows them to creatively develop their Im imagination, talents, uh, physical, cognitive, emotional strength, and that parents are naturally the best and the first playmates, even on the plane <laughs> during the one hour stop and delay. Uh, in 2019, your foundation started a partnership with UNICEF uh, to scale parenting program, and uh, you are doing a very in-depth uh, work in countries like Zambia and Serbia, but we also know that you have a very big network of partners implementing playful parenting. So can you tell us something about program and initiative? Because today with us we have some people who are very interested and might want to join your movement. Great. Thanks so much for that introduction um, and thank you um, very much for organising this event. It's um, really, really lovely to uh, put some faces to some names and to see mo so many people joining this um, important conversation today. Um, obviously, ESA and UNICEF and, and all our partners um, make important and excellent contributions to the global ECD learning agenda and I hope that this webinar will do the same. And, and this is absolutely crucial as we all continue to support and advocate and, and indeed fund ECD programs for young children and their caregivers um, during the pandemic, but also beyond that as well. So thanks ever so much for having us, us here today. I just would like to touch on Parenting Month for a moment. Um, Parenting Month is celebrated every year in June, and it really is building on the UNICEF's Early Moments Matter initiative, raising awareness and building support so that parents have the time and the resources and services to provide that eat, play, love needed to give their, the children the best start in life. Recognising that the past year has been particularly tough on parents worldwide, family mental health and wellbeing, and the importance of continuing to learn through play, and the value of playful interactions between parent and child were the focus of this year's event. So it's a really great end on the 30th of June to Parenting Month to have this webinar today where we can talk about the practicalities and the learnings of delivering these programmes on the ground. Um, as I said, it's always a pleasure to work in partnership with ESA, Aga Khan, UNICEF, and I'm really looking forward to hearing the discussions on the challenges and learnings and outcomes from the experiences of the teams implementing playful parenting programmes. Um, as asked to by Zonica, I would like to tell you a little bit more about the Playful Parenting Initiative and the LEGO Foundation. I took over running the Playful Parenting Initiative just at the beginning of January. You'll all know my, probably know my uh, extremely wonderful uh, predecessor, Diego. I've certainly got really big shoes to fill. I know he was um, very engaged throughout the sector, so I look forward to getting to know lots more organisations and you all um, much more um, over the course of the next few years. The LEGO Foundation aims to build a future in which learning through play empowers all children to become creative, engaged, lifelong learners. And as we all know, parents are fundamental to that aim um, as the first and most important carer and teacher in that child's life. And they want to be heavily invested in their children's learning and development. I'm sure we will talk today about some of the challenges that COVID-19 has um, presented for our programming and presented for the support that we give to families. And I'm sure you are much, much closer to knowing that the families have been isolated under financial pressure and caregivers um, have been at much increased risk of stress and depression and anxiety. And unfortunately that has linked an increase in violence at the home. And at the very same time, the services designed to support them can't reach them in the usual ways. And we've been so amazed at the dedication and ingenuity and innovation of our partners um, to continue to deliver for and improve the lives of children through this crisis. 
COVID notwithstanding, our, fan, our, fan, our playful parenting initiative has four main aims. Firstly, to accelerate the scale up of quality parenting interventions that support the use of play to promote children's holistic development and bolster primary caregivers' demand for playful learning. Secondly, to invest in implementation science to better understand the impacts of messages, modalities, dosages, technology, and other aspects of implementation so that funders, policymakers, and practitioners can make more informed decisions. Third, to support greater uptake and monitoring of best practice in large scale parenting interventions. And fourth, to equip key sector leaders with the knowledge and skills that they need to integrate play based parenting approaches across health, education, and social protection systems. The goal is to see more parents and caregivers of children aged three and under actively engaging in playful learning in home and community settings. Ultimately, we want to see a seismic mindset and behaviour shift from parents and caregivers, from understanding to enacting and ultimately advocating for investment in and support for parenting interventions. We want to see the workforce developed to better understand the importance of playful parenting and learning through play is critical to this. And ultimately, we aim to influence systems to better invest in and support parenting interventions to systemically reach children with learning through play. And you are the practitioners, program leads, program managers and advocates that are working so hard to support families and children on the ground. So we thank you for not only everything that you do, but for attending today and wanting to learn more and improve the services that, that we give to children and families. Um, and I really look forward to the discussion and learning and learning more from you today. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Tema. And thank you to Lego and all the partners, I like to say, for putting the joy of parenting and the power of play in the spotlight again. Because usually when we talk about parenting, it's about challenges, it's about problems, but we should talk more about the joy that comes out from that. And talking about the joy and play, uh, can I ask you to remind us about the beauty of the play by organizing a, a playful activity for all of us? Of course, of course. And actually, that was going to be the theme of the first um, activity we're going to do. And it is about reminding ourselves of the joy of play and the impact that that's had on us um, as children. Or, or even, indeed, um, memories of playing with our children that has given us life and us energy and just really made our day. Bearing in mind that probably the vast majority of us are at home still, what I would like you to do in, you have two minutes, to go and find in your home your favourite memory or family memory photo um, of play or, or an activity you did with your children or something that represents a really, really good memory memory that you have as a child, favorite teddy bear um, or that you've still got or, or, or that, um, that you've had experiences with, with, your, with your child or your family. Then I want you to take a photo and post it in the chat and we'll just be brought to life about all these amazing, playful, great memories we've had about um, as in families because that's what this is about, strengthening and supporting families to have joyful moments. So, you can go on your marks, get set, go. I'm not at home, <laughs> but I will you find something. You can find a photo on your phone, Zorica. <laughs> no one else who's at home can, though. Yeah. Yeah.
So when you've found something, if you can either post it in the chat or as you say, you're doing um, showing showing it in the in the uh, in the photo. And if anyone would like to talk about what they're showing whilst we're waiting for everyone to come back, um, just take yourself off mute and and give us an example. Well, in, by the time it takes me to um, get through and post my photo, I might as well just show you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so people who've been on calls with me before know that I bring out Barbie when I get asked this question and, you know, coming from the U.S., um, I just have a lot of memories playing with Barbie, um, getting the Barbie um, convertible for Christmas one year. And then I also remember that I uh, wanted to be a hairdresser and so I would cut Barbie's hair and didn't really realize that her hair didn't grow back. Uh, so that was a, a learning moment for sure. Um, so yeah, for me, it was, uh, I just, whenever I get asked that question, I think of playing with Barbies, so. I have to follow you. Oh. Jill, I have to share my Barbie with you. <laughs> That's good. Well, mine is an updated Barbie, but I love yours. Ah, oh, mine is very fancy. Yeah. And I always wanted to fly oh. or to be an angel. So this one is perfect for me. One. I never wanted to look like Barbie. I knew it's not possible, but <laughs> I just wanted to fly. But I also have this, but I also wanted to, it's not because it's Lego, I just got it from you on some meeting, but I also like to make construction. So when my kids were young, I was buying them Lego and other constructed materials for construction, and then they were doing something else, but I was playing like crazy. So that's me, very controversial wow. person. <laughs> Lovely, thank you so much. So we've also got pictures of cardboard boxes and how much fun people have had playing with cardboard boxes and making things. I put a picture um, of my actual recent trip um, back to the UK, who and I haven't been home for six months, of my daughter and her cousin, like playing with each other because they haven't seen each other for so long. And it's just, it's just a beautiful moment. And they were just having so much fun together. And that captured for me the joy of childhood um what else have we got here oh pretending to be anywhere else but in lockdown yes i'm sure that was a, a very important imaginative game that people did any others that people want to share yes um hello um also i can't take the picture but i just wanted to share these goggles anyone can see these yeah just picked them up from my, my daughter's closet, all grown, but they're meant for swimming, right? But as we are doing kitchen stuff together, playing, she was like, the onions get into my eyes. So she comes down like this with goggles to cut onions, eh? because she doesn't want the onions to get into her eyes. So it's such a memorable occasion. We call it the gaggle onion cutter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that one. They're so inventive, aren't they? And, and imaginative um, and make us think outside of the box. Yeah. And it's just such a shame that um, that imaginative thinking can get so killed and dulled throughout life. And yeah. our role is to keep it going for as long as possible. Brilliant. Yeah, it's much more sense than sticking a silver spoon in your mouth as well, which is an old wives' tale, isn't it? <laughs> Gemma, I would we like to, to share a mud kitchen. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, my uh, children, <laughs> my baby, two year old baby. That is fab. That's a lot of mud. That's amazing. A lot of, a lot of good. Food she makes there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Talking yeah. about kitchen. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. 
Right, well, I think we will let the, let everyone, I hope everyone's back at their uh, computers and I've not, you know, still not lost in bedrooms searching for, searching for things, but I hope just have a little look at the pictures as they come in and just think about those, those moments in your life where you connected with family and, and had, and had really, really close moments and hopefully that will um, put us in the right frame of mind for, for the rest of the session. Yes, and I think if you'd ask uh, people like me, oh, we had was somebody else, yeah? Who wanted to say something? Sorry. Oh, my mistake. If you, if you ask all the generations, we were playing with everything. Nothing was forbidden, but I love this new, new advocacy action, like uh, let children play in the mud. They are 100% washable. Kids are 100% washable. Thank you, thank you, Gemma. I think that this really brings back nice, uh, nice memories. Now we will go to our panel, and we have a great pleasure to have with us today Joyce Marangu, project coordinator from Aga Khan Development Network from Kenya, given Dhaka educational specialist from UNICEF Zambia, and Mila Vukovic Ivanovic, early childhood development officer from UNICEF Serbia. Can we see three of them? <laughs> because I want to tell them thank you for joining us. And I would like to start from Joyce and ask Joyce to tell us briefly about her organization and the work you are doing under Playful Parenting. Welcome, Joyce. Thank you very much, Zurika, and thank you for organizing this um, event. Um, so um, my name is uh, Joyce Parango, as you've said, and um, from the Aga Khan Development Network, which is um, uh, made up of many different agencies, particularly I come from the uh, Aga Khan University um, Institute for Human Development, where we are doing research on early childhood development and um, aspects of playful parenting that support children's um, development. So within the Aga Khan Development Network, there's also the Aga Khan Foundation, uh, which has uh, more hands-on um, experience in delivering um, ECD projects within communities and within with different civil uh, community-based organizations and civil society organizations. Um, so within that whole large um, uh, group of uh, agencies, we have uh, also like uh, organic programs like the Madrasa Early Childhood Program, which I'll be speaking about in terms of the frontline work that they've done in terms of engaging families and communities to enhance the playful uh, parenting. And um, there are lots of lessons to be drawn from there. We've been documenting uh, case studies on the um, implementation of care for child development as well as other programs that are being implemented in the community. So in a nutshell, um, that's what uh, the Aga Khan Development uh, Network is about. There's a whole lot more, but uh, for now, I think I will just um, uh, give you that and you can read a, a, a bit more on our website. Thank you. You can, you can share the website with people and we are going to share all the websites later at the end, but it's also okay if you want to share it now. Thank you, thank you so much. And Given, so now I have to talk with Given and Mila and I'm not going to ask them about their organization because they're coming from UNICEF and I think we all know a lot about UNICEF. But Given, what are you doing? How did you, what, what is the work that you are UNICEF Zambia is doing on playful parenting. What are the highlights um, of the of your work? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Zorika and colleagues. Um, now, UNICEF Zambia is implementing the playful parenting uh, program uh, through a partnership with government. Um, essentially, the program has three main components. 
One component is around policy, strengthening policy and system strengthening uh, for playful parenting. And then the second component is strengthening systems for delivery of playful parenting at community level. And the third, and the third component is really around advocacy and promoting um, uh, playful parenting through a public campaign. So those are the three um, sort of main tenets of the, uh, the playful parenting um, program in Zambia. Um, so I'm not sure, Zorika, whether um, you would like me to respond directly to the questions um, for uh, this first phase of the panel. I muted myself. No, 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 wait a little bit, because I also want Mila to tell us what they are doing in Serbia. Because they are also so thank putting you. a lot of, thank you, thank you. Uh, they are thank putting a, a lot of effort in implementing playful parenting in Serbia. Okay, thanks a lot, dear Zorica, and uh, great to see you all, dear colleagues. Uh, and uh, thank you, dear Gemma, for putting me in this uh, much different mindset uh, and uh, having this picture uh, of my daughter beside me during this, uh, this uh, uh, session today. Uh, it is a real privilege to speak uh, on behalf of the Serbian UNICEF team today and to have the opportunity to share our experience uh, and uh, learn from you. And uh, as Olica said, I'm Nukovic Jovanovic, Early Childhood Development Officer in the UNICEF country office in Serbia. And I am deeply engaged in the implementation and scaling playful parenting program within our country. And uh, what it means for us, for us, scaling up playful parenting in Serbia is relating to working with the three sectors, aiming to strengthen health, education, and social welfare services by switching practice from a medical to a family-centered approach, where the focus is on fostering, nurturing, and playful child-parent uh, interaction. And this includes, uh, and this also includes engaging a wide range of different stakeholders and partners from the local and the national level, policy makers and decisioners, early childhood de development frontline workers, experts, academia, influencers and playful parenting champions, media, even parliament for a reason, for, from reason, uh, as well as the parents and caregivers themselves in a process that we like to call open and vivid dialogue uh, to actually challenge the dominant social norms related to parenting and child development in our country, uh, which for example, just to be colorful, still promote gender unbalanced parenting, positioning women predominantly in the parenting role, and the beliefs uh, such as like prioritizing care for the physical well-being of the child, absolutely neglecting magnificent opportunities of learning to play in early years. And this also reflected in the way of how services are organized in our country. Wait now, wait and, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will, I will stop now, definitely, and uh, leave the time uh, for... Uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm saying wait now because I think that you are entering the zone of my next question and I already wanted yeah. to start from yes, you. Yes, of course. I just want to conclude with that uh, for, uh, for us, we actually to try to make something that we call a social movement, that this initiative need to get a quality of social movement and to try to elevate uh, actually this movement with the different strategies in the different levels. So I believe we will talk about that. Yes, yes, and, and thank you. And it's such a pleasure to work with, uh, with passionate panelists, but then sometimes you have to say, wait, wait a second, I have an additional <laughs> question, which is basically, very related to what you were talking about. And I wanted to start from you asking you that it's also obvious that if we want to address the needs and support uh, early child development, especially in the first three years, we have to have holistic approach. Holistic development requires holistic, holistic approach. And also that this, this in a way, uh, requires inter interagency integrated approach to to families and children. So, 
how did you start? So there is always one sector which is like an entry point. Where, where did you start? Where did you start with the implementation of uh, play, for, play for parenting in your country? What did you use as strategies to pick one sector and then bring the others? Yeah, okay. So this is a question for me. I still yep. can speak, great. Yes, you can. <laughs> and then I will call Given to speak because I stopped. Okay. You, you have absolutely right. Uh, with our country, uh, I suppose as many others, uh, everything starts with the health system. Uh, the health system in our country has a unique position to influence and shape parenting practices. And uh, I want to name a few reasons for that. What is the situation? Uh, first, there is a high rate of coverage. Uh, up to 98% of the population, including children, are reached by the primary level of the health protection in our country. Second, there is established universal progressive home visiting services with also a high level of coverage. And almost every child has their own pediatrician, you know, something that we call like chosen pediatrician for the child with up to 11 regular checkups in the first three years of life. But what is the point? Uh, the persons who organize and provide health and nutrition services uh, know what needs to be done to protect children from illness and support their physical growth. They have children have a strong, healthy start in life. But the key question is how uh, they or how we together and jointly can also better strengthen the child's early psychological, emotional and social development and better support the child development in ways that also we improve our de delivery of existing services. So there is many answers for that. There is many solution and strategy strategies that should be employed. But one of them is by strengthening the linkages between different sector services among one sector and different, se uh, different sectors uh, uh, together. Because this help these people, practitioners and uh, managers to get something that we call a bigger, bigger picture connecting the dots, learn from each other, and starting to think about children and families in a more holistic way, and reflecting their needs in a contextualized manner, which often, the, they often lack of this vision if they are just uh, starting from the point of their own role. So to be more concrete, what we actually did within this Play for Parenting program, uh, we have mapping all on all of entry points in so-called road map of parenting and child development in the community and connecting, connecting all of these people in, uh, uh, in like a joint discussion and train them uh, together for better understanding of child development, the role of play, the role of communication, reading and the interaction with the parents, but uh, also open the uh, dialogue and perspective of what could prevent parents from engaging in responsive and nurturing relationship with their ch uh, children, uh, starting with a lack of knowledge and uh, predominant social norms and patterns, but also with understanding of the overwhelming stress and vulnerabilities that impacts uh, the lot of families that uh, uh, which we are work. work. Uh, so, what happened with this process, uh, this dialogue among health professionals, preschool teachers, social welfare, welfare service providers, and psychologists and experts in ECD opened many opportunities. And one of the key lessons I learned from all participants is that actually uh, supports for parents and building uh, parents' capa capacities too often follow in the gaps of the systems. And although the common knowledge is that the parents and the caregivers are a key influencers of child development and uh, uh, to lifelong outcomes for children, in fact, nobody prioritizes supporting their capacities. So for example, the health system focuses, focuses on the physical well-being, preschool working dominantly with the children, neglecting cooperation with parents, and social welfare, welfare is focusing on safety and protecting children from violence. But the key ingredient for all of this, health, child development, and the safety, 
which is secure attachment, loving and stimulative environment with the most important people for a child, their parents, is in nobody yard exactly. So the ultimate goal of our playful parenting program intervention is to develop something that we call a common congruent narrative and key messages that will be transferred to the parents across integrated and coordinated systems with the different level of interventions that depend on the specific role of the service provider within the system. I would give you for the end just example of that. For example, home visiting nurses should be trained to be able to model child parents talk and play interaction in a sensitive and responsive manner. But the pediatricians from the same health center could during the routine and regular visits give to parents recipe for play and reading with child and with that uh, emphasizing this as a metaphor of how important those activities are for the children or they could introduce, which is a, a more deeply and systematic change that we also dedicated to, uh, regular monitoring of child develop development by positioning ages and stages uh, uh, developmental screening instrument into routine health checkups of pediatricians. And preschool teachers can do something else and so on and so forth. This is the idea of how we can be around the families. Yeah, how you build, how you call it, how you build the uh, nurturing orbits around the parent. Uh, now I would like to ask, given, given you also have uh, some kind of platforms for integrated work, you didn't start from scratch, how did you do your work in Zambia? Was it health sector again? <laughs> Right. Thank you, Zorika, and um, pleasure to be, uh, to be able to share the Zambia experience. Um, in Zambia, as I said earlier, uh, the Playful Parenting Program um, has adopted, um, is being delivered through a multi-sectoral uh, program approach or program framework. Um, the, means the health sector has actually uh, been the entrance point um, particularly to reach caregivers of young children of zero to three. But considering that, um, the, um, that uh, um, children, many children in Zambia face many adversities, um, the multi-sectoral uh, program framework also enables um, uh, the collaboration to collaborate with other um, key sectors. So um, the sectors that um, are part of this program is um, uh, health and nutrition, um, education, um, and the, the uh, protection sector um, that uh, are responsible for uh, delivering programs in social and child protection um, uh, programs. So the Zambia Playful Parenting Program actually um, works across the three sectors through the leadership of the, uh, of the Ministry of Health, um, across the three sectors of, uh, as I said, health, education, and social and child protection. So um, at a practical level, this means uh, working uh, with uh, four uh, government ministries um, uh, in terms of ensuring um, that uh, the strengthening of the capacity um, and systems and the policy environment for delivering um, um, nurturing care and playful parenting across the different sectors and that uh, there's also a uh, service delivery and um, the delivery of an integrated um, package at community level um, with a focus on scaling up um, the counseling support to caregivers uh, for nurturing care and playful parenting. And, and of course, um, the third component, which I mentioned earlier was advocacy and, uh, and public campaign. So now if I, uh, on the issues of uh, strengthening capacity as systems and the policy, again, as I said, it's working uh, across the, uh, the different uh, sectors. This involves um, strengthening, um, uh, you know, uh, the service delivery systems, because apart from just identifying the key priority sectors, there is also going um, um, a level down to identify strategic entry points in the different sectors. Um, for example, um, um, in, in the health, uh, um, looking at the integration so that uh, playful parenting is part of the service delivery in at antenatal care, 
um, in the child in the uh, safe safe motherhood uh, programs, in the under five uh, uh, programs, and and as a child health uh, programs beyond just the three years. So um, uh, so it's really integrating in existing uh, programs um, in the early childhood education, strengthening uh, service delivery, strengthening capacity um, across the um, the different um, uh, um, sectors. Then the other strategy uh, which has also uh, been um, um, so characteristic of the Zambia program is also is apart from just identifying entry points across the different sectors is also integrating in in some of the national programs. Uh, for example, right now we have a big national program which is uh, going into. 17 districts under the scaling up nutrition so integrating um, components of uh, playful parenting across the the, um, the national um, these national um, uh, programs at community level um, again at community level the um, the program as, um, it delivers um, a, an integrated um, a package of services at community level uh, which focuses on supporting uh, caregivers to in increase their um, knowledge and their uh, um, parenting uh, practices in relation to playful parenting together with other components such as uh, nutrition um, 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 and feeding and ensuring that playful parenting is integrated in those elements as well um, in terms of the nutrition provision, in terms of the health provision, right up to the, um, the, uh, the community level. A key element of the program is the delivery of parental uh, counseling and support at household level um, through uh, community-based volunteers that are trained in the care for child development um, and who are the actually the, the foot soldiers that go and support uh, parents at household level. Um, and then at, this, at the facility level, um, also strengthening uh, the capacity of the, um, of the facility-based uh, service providers to be also be able to support uh, caregivers um, in playful parenting as part of the, um, the, qual the quality uh, delivery um, of uh, standards of services that are, that are delivered. So you can see that this is a multi-layered um, uh, program approach that we have that starts from the community level um, and then um, also at the service delivery level and then at national level in terms of the policy um, environment. And maybe just a, 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 a comment that I, I would like to make at community level, um, just like um, what I was, my Sabian colleague was uh, talking about, there are a lot of cultural um, practices and perceptions and, um, and, 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 and beliefs that sometimes do stand in the way of playful parenting. So, um, for example, um, the, the male involvement is one of the issues that we have to conquer and, and, and have to address. So, um, this program works very closely with traditional leaders, tra uh, chiefs, and headmen and women and head women who are the custodian of, um, of cultural practices to be able to ensure that they too are oriented on the importance of playful parenting um, in the, in the uh, traditional uh, caregiving practices. So those are the elements that um, also are involved in the community level engagement um, that, we, uh, um, that we have also working in partnership with um, NGO partners such as uh, Child Fund at community level. So um, maybe let me stop there and uh, we'll be able to share more. Oh, I'm so sad that you will stop there. It's so interesting yep. how to deal with the existing practices, but in a, in a respectful in a respectful way. And what we've heard from you and Mila is that this community engagement is very important, but it's also sometimes the best entry point first entry point, not the last, is the health sector. So what is your experience in Kenya, Joyce? Where did you, what was the fir, key, first key hole to unlock? <laughs> the okay, first door so, to open. Okay. Um, the playful parenting activities that we've been doing within this initiative have been, uh, we've been uh, doing uh, training activities and so uh, not just with one sector but we've uh, just like uh, in the case of Zambia we've uh, uh, used a multi-sectoral approach 
in the sense that um, at the systems level, we work primarily with the different sectors with health, education, nutrition, social protection, child protection. And we have found that uh, because we're trying to make the case at the systems level for uh, governments, for our government to uh, invest more in the playful parenting, we also have to engage the pers you know, the people holding the, the budget. So we have to engage also the economic plan, uh, planning and the finance teams as well. So our uh, training and capacity building efforts have uh, basically incorporated all of these sectors. And um, sometimes when we're working on in different contexts, depending on the key issues affecting the communities within that context, we also take into consideration aspects that might, you know, issues that might be affecting children. For instance, when we're working in, um, in Kenya, we have the arid and semi-arid areas that are drought prone. They have issues, um, sometimes uh, have had insecurities and violence. So in that case, we engage, uh, you know, actors who are working in the space of conflict resolution and uh, water and sanitation issues. So we try to, as much as possible to incorporate all of these actors because we find that when we bring them together, we're able to harness, you know, the synergies that uh, helped this, uh, the sectors to uh, build on whatever each uh, of the other sectors is working on. So uh, that has been our approach uh, in terms of capacity development. And uh, so it, uh, through that we've done um, workshops to, to encourage policymakers to invest in uh, playful parenting. And then we've also had at the practitioner level where we have uh, people who are implementing projects from uh, NGOs and from other sectors, I mean, from other, you know, that cadre of workers to uh, enhance their technical skills at a more nuanced skill, like to, in, to ensure that they pick up the technical skills much better. We've uh, also developed training programs for them. For instance, we have the Science of Early Child Development, which is uh, oh. our uh, technical uh, yeah, training sorry. through which we have, uh, sorry, I think somebody is on mute. Please, can you, can you mute yourself? Not you, not you, Joyce, <laughs> the others. Yes. Sorry so, for this interruption. Uh, yeah, sure. And uh, so through these trainings, people also, I mean, the people who go through these trainings also are able to um, identify activities that they are able to, um, to implement once they go back to their work. And so uh, what we've seen is that uh, a lot of the people we've trained have gone on to do additional trainings in the setting where they're working. And there has been a cascade in terms of uh, transferring knowledge. So uh, once you've done training for the implementers, they go ahead and uh, simplify the training that they've received and then they transmit that training at the community level. So that has helped also to, in the efforts to scale up the playful parenting because uh, it uh, helps us to broaden the reach uh, into the communities and to, into the families. We also have um, a mentorship and coaching activities uh, supports that are done through um, ECD pr pr practitioners within our setting. And this is, you know, to continue the training, so to, to continue the capacity building. So above uh, doing a one week workshop or a, a seven week online training, you know, uh, the, we found like the feedback we received is that people really need uh, to uh, carry on uh, receiving mentorship and support to be handheld in terms of uh, if they encounter any challenges and if they need further support, technical advisory, um, that kind of thing helps because uh, a one-off training does not necessarily mean that uh, the skills and capacity is enhanced. So uh, that's some of the strategies that we've used. And on top of that, we also uh, developed resources that ensure that uh, we're able to disseminate some of this knowledge that uh, is suitable to families and for practitioners as well. 
And so um, some of the things that we've developed are, uh, for instance, documenting what uh, our, our partner organizations, so for instance, the Madras Early Childhood Program that I had mentioned earlier, um, the experiences that they had uh, received while implementing um, care for child development programs and any other initiatives that they've uh, um, implemented in the in, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania, basically in the East Africa region. So uh, the experiences have been uh, similar in terms of uh, whom it is that they engage at the onset. So as as uh, the other panelists have already mentioned, uh, the health sector has been you know, a key player in that as an entry point. But then um, uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, you, we also have um, uh, incorporated the support of the other sectors within that program. For instance, um, the, in, um, in Kenya, the, once, once the training for the care for child development, for instance, was done with the frontline workers in the health sector, uh, the home visitors were paired with uh, preschool teachers because the preschool teachers uh, we found in our program had a very close link with the community members. And so it, it made sense for them to work hand in hand including while doing the home visit. So that was a particularly useful uh, learning that we had. And so it's also helped to build our, um, our case uh, documentation on what works within our context. And so um, in addition to that, we also uh, did the technical advisory for, uh, to provide the policymakers with additional technical support. Once they have um, we find that once they have um, received the a workshop that uh, that helps them to come up with an action plan on how they're going to to scale up playful parenting initiatives within their jurisdictions, it helps that they um, yeah. have a forum that they can continue to receive support whenever uh, they need to. Um, but so some of the challenges we've had so far is that. Um, you know, it's easy to talk about multi-sectoral <laughs> cooperation, but it's uh, when it comes to implementation, sometimes there are challenges with that because you find that if uh, a particular sector is leading this initiative, then if you, for instance, have activities that are uh, geared towards um, uh, building capacity, you find that, you know, that sector might tend to dominate the scene and, and there would be token representation from the other sectors. And so one sector sometimes tends to overpower the rest in terms of um, yeah. <laughs> and all that. So, so, but what we are, you know, one of the strategies we've uh, employed is to approach this from um, a more, you know, like a, from the leadership level where you have in Kenya, for instance, early childhood development um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a devolved function. And so if you, um, if you want to work with the counties and ensure that there is at least um, representation from all of the sectors that you want to work with, then it helps that you uh, approach, you know, how you approach, how you enter, and how you begin these discussions um, influences uh, the participation from the other sectors. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, it requires, uh, as you said, it's easier to talk about that than to put it, translate it into practice. But I'm very grateful for points you made, and I think that uh, it's very much in tune with uh, what Given and Mila were mentioning is that. We usually, maybe that's some kind of wrap up, we usually use the sector which is strong and have access to families and trust of the families. But all three of you were talking about the whole system approach and also whole community approach. So it's not only about, uh, not only about the workforce and we put the, the, the burden on the workforce, it's also about enabling environment in the system and also out of the out of the system so you also 
Joyce, you also mentioned how you prepared the workforce, but I would also like to, sh to hear in brief the like highlights from Mila and, and from, uh, from Given. What did you do? How did you? I know that in both countries you invested a lot of energy in supporting the workforce, and maybe we can already say that one of the strategies is to create enabling environment which is going to support them. So, can I hear, thank you, thank you, Joyce. Can I hear now Given and uh, Mila, whomever, what, what would you like to add? How did you support uh, the workforce? Okay, um, with regards to the workforce, because the workforce actually is a very critical aspect um, for um, taking playful parenting to scale. So in Zambia, uh, what we did uh, with regards to the workforce is we intervened at two levels. One um, is at the level of the pre-service uh, training, where we are um, strengthening um, selected national training systems for essential workforce. For example, um, the nurses, where we've integrated uh, nurturing care and playful parenting in the uh, nurses training curriculum, and we I also have started um, our discussions for integrating this um, in, in, in at the university level and also um, uh, moving forward, we intend to also integrate in the national training system for social welfare officers. So that is at one level um, where we intervene to strengthen uh, and integrate um, uh, nurturing care and playful parenting in the national training systems and that will also help uh, to take things to scale. Um, then the second level um, is in terms of addressing the capacity building of those, um, the workforce that is already uh, working in the field that are already um, um, working. So um, this is where um, the program uh, uh, provides um, uh, uh, trainings, uh, particularly in the care for child development, uh, to uh, frontline workers, starting with the community-based volunteers, but also um, uh, service providers. These are the uh, the, the in-service nurses, the community health assistants, the ECE teachers, um, and also the those under um, the protection sector. Um, so, um, and of course, this started by creating a core team of trainers um, who are who have helped to cascade the trainings uh, below um, um, more broadly uh, to a, a bigger constituency of, um, of the workforce. Um, then the third element which I would like to highlight, and I think this is an important aspect when it comes to um, the, uh, the workforce, is really uh, strengthening supervision uh, systems and putting in place um, continuous uh, learnings and continuous um, uh, development uh, for those that are in the field. Um, so uh, building the capacity of supervisors to be able to actually um, support and supervise the work of the frontline workers and also in the process um, uh, uh, continuously uh, build their, uh, their capacity as well as the uh, um, creating opportunities uh, for, um, for peer learning so that they are able to um, cross-reference and learn from each other. Um, under the partnership that we have with Child Fund um, at a community level, there is what uh, we call uh, reflection meetings, quarterly reflection meetings, where um, the community-based volunteers that are operating in, in a particular area do have an opportunity to, uh, to meet each other and, and, and learn from each other. Uh, so I think those are the, the, when it comes to the workforce uh, in the Zambia case, those are the critical um, um, uh, components. Thank you so much. And I think, Mila, in Serbia, you have very similar approach, putting a lot of energy and, and uh, time and investment in this enabling environment, including supervisors. And yes, this was really great to hear experience from Joyce and from Given, uh, since there is a lot of similarity. This um, encourages us 
that we uh, pick the right strategies uh, and that we will have opportunity to, um, uh, I don't know, learning more from each other about what strategies give the best results. Uh, but from our exper experience and learning until now, we try to sort it like a, a tree, tree group of the factors of the, or the reasons that uh, could increase the level of the motivation and, the ga and engagement of uh, frontline workers. And uh, uh, first that we realize is that this learning and training opportunities should engage their hearts as well as their minds. And this is something that really make a difference uh, because frontline workers, uh, we strongly believe, really need to be validated for unique position and valuable role that they have in a child and caregiver lives. Um, and after the some of the training sessions, they convey that they really appreciate that training gives them the tools to reshape their role from parents educators to become collaborative partners with the parents. So they often use the favorite metaphor from the Caring for the Caregivers program, which was implemented as a part of the Playful Parenting Initiative. Uh, and the favorite metaphor of them is blanket of support, the opportunity to be a blanket of support for the caregivers in the same way that the caregivers and parents are the blankets of support for their babies. Uh, and the second lesson, second factor which uh, promotes their motivation, which we also uh, realize is something that given already explained very well, is introducing this supportive supervision as a part of the learning opportunities. And for us, this meaning really to be with the people when they try to do something new and different, uh, which is not the job as usual. Um, and uh, also one of the, like a favorite metaphor, also from the Caring for the Caregivers program from the frontline workers in Serbia, is a basket of stress. And they really appreciate that they have someone to be with them when things go hard on when they feel overwhelmed with the challenges and to support them in emptying this basket of stress. And this is exactly the same way which is program actually expect of them to be with the parents and support them when the, their basket of stress is uh, overwhelmed and need to be empty. Uh, and the third fact, uh, factor, I think Joyce also uh, emphasized this, uh, is uh, related to the opportunity uh, to share and disse disseminate uh, knowledge and the uh, skills uh, and to try themselves uh, in the role of peer trainers uh, and to really give their own contribution to the process of scaling this playful uh, program and playful parenting intervention. Uh, which also, in a way, validates their important role in the system. So that, thank that's you, something. thank you, Mila. This is something that I think we should all keep in mind. If we want frontline workers to be caring and supportive, they need to feel the same, that they are cared about and supported. Thank you, thank you to all three of you. It was very, I'm, I'm always frustrated with time limits, but now it's time to go to the small groups and I hope you will be able to continue discussion. So we are going to have four groups and you are going to be randomly divided into groups. First group is Mila with Ivana. In the second group, you will meet Given and, jo and me. Third group, Joyce and Olesia. In the fourth group, you will have Gemma and Jill. And in each group, we are going to discuss these two key topics, key areas, uh, integrated work and, uh, and supporting the workforce. We are going to stay in small groups like 30 minutes, up to 30 minutes, and we kindly invite you to use post-its and post it on Jamboard. Each group is going to have their own Jamboard. It's not a big mess if you mix uh, Jamboard and write on the Jamboard of the other groups. Don't worry about that as long as you, your posts are making that group look great. And 
just to tell you that uh, when we come back from the small groups, we are going to address the question of COVID. So please do not use time in small groups for asking this kind of question or asking more questions to panelists, but really to enjoy in, in mutual exchange. My colleague Olesia is going now to share to share the link to the Jamboard. I hope you all have some kind of experience with it. It's extremely simple. You just press the link, you will go to the Jamboard, then you will see the number of your group, and you just go to that. You slide the slide, then you go to your Jamboard. Don't worry, just enjoy. So now you have a link. Let's meet at the Jamboard. Okay, so Mila, you were the group one. Can you tell us some impressions from your group? Well, I, I, can, I can tell, but also I could invite uh, colleagues from the group uh, to tell in their, in their own name, because there was a, a couple of great points related to par parenting and play for parenting program. Um, do you see them, my, sorry, do you see my screen? Yes, I see. So I'm sharing the 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 Jamboard. Do you see it? Group one. Yes, I yes. can see it. Group one. Yes. So these are your points. Please. Very yeah, brief. I can highlight it just the, the one that I remember actually. <laughs> because I'm not sure about all, all of this. Uh, one of them is related of how it is important to support parents to under, understand the power and the uh, value of learning to play uh, and unpack all the uh, changes which are related to uh, brain development uh, uh, which is uh, in the context of uh, um, the playful uh, environments and playful interaction between adults. Uh, and uh, there is uh, some great, uh, um, great experience with some um, easy read books for parents in which they can inform themselves. Um, but actually they miss if they don't know about uh, about how uh, learning to play influence uh, uh, the um, outcomes for child development. Uh, and then other, uh, it, the, there was a point about how the, uh, that parents always want the best for their children, of course, but the uh, uh, real differences make, uh, uh, do they have available and quality um, support uh, uh, in a, a timely manner. So, for example, when the pre breastfeeding was the example that we elaborate, uh, and um, uh, the, the answer on the question what uh, support parents to change this, their practice is uh, to provide them uh, opportunity to experience something alternative, you know, to really... Uh, something different, something, something completely different. different. Yes. And, and let, let's go to the group two because we are limited with time. Thank you, group one. Yes. Given what can we say about group two, what are your highlights of our except the fact that half of our participants had issues with internet, with mics, some were on the beach and could not <laughs> talk because of the noise. But uh, yeah, I, I think um, uh, in, in uh, group two, um, as uh, Zorika said, we did have um, a less uh, um, a participation or interactiveness because um, the most of the uh, those that were there were um, from uh, my country, and they uh, more or less, um, you know, the things that I had mentioned were were the things that uh, um, would have, they would have mentioned. But uh, having said that, I think uh, one of the points that was raised was that you know the entrance um, sector um, in 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 the in the program um, should also be taken into account the context. Uh, whether if it is health or if it is a protection sector or if it is education sector, for example, um, that that should uh, be sensitive to the particular context. So we gave the um, 
the example of, of, of Zambia, for example, where um, the, at the time that uh, the Playful Parenting uh, program was being launched, government had just um, signed up to the nurturing care uh, framework, uh, um, and, and what, which was led by the Ministry of Health. So it was um, easier um, to, um, to, to work and collaborate with the Ministry of Health because they were already positioned in that direction. Um, so taking cognizant of the context is also something that um, that is very uh, um, critical. Yeah, I, 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 if I may add, I was I really like this that the entry sector is what you just said depends on context and, and that we always need to pick the strongest one, the yeah. the sector which has trust of uh, parents and the sector that has outreach. And in Portugal, it's early childhood education sector. In many exactly. countries, it's not. Yes, exactly. And, and I think, yeah. And as you said, this, this uh, uh, collaborates with the point that our, um, our colleague from Portugal actually also raised um, with that. For them, their entry point is... Um, early childhood. Yeah, exactly. And then on the uh, um, on the issue of the workforce, I, I, I think the experiences um, that we got from those that are on the ground was that um, the the having um, uh, combined teams or joint teams across the sectors in the training um, does help um, um, in terms of uh, um, bringing in um, uh, different perspectives in the trainings, but also facilitating the delivery across sectors so that when we are reaching children, um, their children are being reached, uh, I mean, sorry, the caregivers and children in playful parenting, they are being reached through different touch points across the different sectors. So already having this start um, from the training level of the training workforce um, is, is, an, is actually an, an enabler um, for that kind of delivery. So, so thank you, thank you, Given. Let's see what Joyce, group three, what would you like to add, Joyce, that we didn't, didn't mention until now? Can you add one or two things? I think, well, we spent a lot of time discussing how, um, you know, like the different sectors, for instance, the health sector can embrace um, teachings or learnings from its early childhood uh, development and incorporate that into their practice. So, uh, but some of the uh, other issues that uh, have been put down here include uh, jointly developing work plans between the sectors because once you have a joint work plan then it's easier for the sectors to fall in line and to implement whatever has been agreed upon in the joint plan and so um, working together in that manner will help to build the, uh, the collaboration between sectors and then uh, we also look at, in terms of like the supports that you're providing uh, the workforce, um, that you also take care of the workforce. Like, you know, like um, we have here the learning that uh, it's, it's, it is important to provide care, uh, the workforce with, uh, you know, like- Caring. Yeah, that uh, the, the workforce are at a, a, at a are in a position to provide additional, you know, like empathy and, you know, to really support the, fa uh, the families. And so uh, supporting them by equipping them with the resources, um, ensuring that their work level of workload is uh, managed and maintained at a level that they can, um, uh, that they can succeed in is important. And so I think that some, I would not repeat some of the points that have been mentioned by the other groups, but um, yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting session. Thank you. Yeah, we agree and we have some things that we could have long discussions. Maybe we can continue in the future. And Jana and Jill, would, is there something that we didn't mention and you would like to add? Oh, I hope we didn't lose them. I know we're here. Um, I'm just looking at the um, notes again. Um, 
there was quite an interesting point around um, ensuring that um, children are looked at holistically, which we've, we've touched on before, and that potentially some often direction from higher up than the leaders of those ministries helps with the coordination. So securing buy-in at the top, which then trickles down rather than trying to get that, um, get that coordination going. Um, there was challenges around um, not, not using the same monitoring tool, but we didn't really have any solutions or any kind of examples of how, um, of how that can be overcome. And we talked a lot about retaining the workforce, which is, again, something that's been mentioned before. Yeah, and it's directly connected with this, that we are overburdening the workforce. And this is something that we unfortunately cannot talk about now, but maybe in the future. So thank you all. And before we say goodbye to each other, I would, uh, I would like I have a, one more basically question for the for the panel because they already addressed the story about uh, involving the whole community and working on different level of the system and in creating enabling environments. Because we have a lot of questions from the audience about how did you how did you adapt playful parenting program during the COVID crisis? What did you do? Who wants to start? <laughs> maybe, maybe given. Yeah, I can start. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for, the, for that question, Zorika. Um, very quickly, uh, just to mention that uh, uh, currently um, Zambia is experiencing the third wave of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which means that the community level activities have actually been um, minimized or restricted, um, including uh, the parenting, counseling and, and trainings and that kind of thing. So um, the way the, the, the program has responded uh, to this is that um, to, to try and continue reaching parents is that uh, um, we have um, used or leveraged um, the use of uh, uh, radio and um, uh, television technology um, to transmit, to continue to transmit uh, key uh, parenting um, messages to caregivers. Uh, because the internet connectivity in Zambia, the use of mobile phones is still quite restricted, uh, particularly in the rural communities, in the rural areas. There is a greater reach through radio. Um, so we have um, uh, working, working with Child Fund, supporting the transmission of um, um, radio uh, content uh, through community radio stations that are uh, providing um, and promoting uh, nurturing care uh, messages to caregivers as well as uh, uh, playful uh, parenting. And then the television sets, um, some in selected uh, facilities, health facilities, um, TVs have been mounted and video um, uh, clips or video content uh, developed and, and those are, are being uh, transmitted in selected uh, facilities because um, MCH services are categorized as essential services that have continued even during the, the COVID uh, time. Um, and therefore, as big uh, parents or caregivers go, they are able to still see um, the demonstrations, the visual demonstration, and, and get key messages in the local languages uh, via the television um, 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 uh, transmission. So um, before I just end up, we have also used, last year we also used the use of public service announcements in, um, in the district that where we were, where a mobile vehicle, as it was going around to, to um, inform uh, um, reach out to caregivers with key messages on COVID. They also included messages on playful parenting. And then um, right now we do have a public campaign that's going on, um, uh, the playful parenting campaign, which is really, um, uh, which has gone national. Um, but so even at this height of the COVID uh, context, uh, we are still able to make sure that we continue to mobilize um, uh, public support and also caregivers um, information on playful parenting. And I, 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 I sorry. Yeah, so I just, so I, um, um, in view of time, uh, those are just the highlights of um, 
of how we have been reaching, continuing to be given. My, my colleague Olesia is going to share your emails and contact information, so I hope that people will reach out. It's going to be shared in the chat box. But okay. what I think it's amazing that you're sharing is that uh, you, you just use this situation to showcase that playful parenting is integral and valuable part of every single intervention that you do not need i don't know to invent things and start from scratch you can use every possibility especially this community radio i love it but mila you also did something similar in terms you used what was already there build a little yes. bit on strengths, yes. existing strengths, and then deliver the program. And your favorite story with the tree. Yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> Zorica. And uh, when, when it comes to COVID, uh, what we actually realize is that um, as with any other like personal or global crisis, uh, with this one also, among all challenges, all negativities, uh, uh, COVID brought to us some opportunities as well. And namely, as you already said, the content of our program become even more relevant in this situation. Uh, and the second is that uh, flexibility and readiness to go beyond our comfort zone and uh, meaning fast forward development of uh, digital com uh, com competency and introducing innovation in our daily work was really amazing. Um, and um, um, I think given already explained how, how you can use a different, different media channels and we do the same. I just want to emphasize that uh, with COVID we become aware how parenting, parenting can be challenging when parents are um, on the uh, additional stress and how actually social support and connection are the key ingredients of resilience. And um, this uh, overwhelming and prolonged stress and the lack of support is a usual situation for many families uh, that we work, uh, struggling with poverty, um, illness and discrimination. Uh, so our lessons learned from COVID is that emotional support for pa parents clearly need to become an inevitable part of our intervention. And that actually playful, nurturing and supportive family relationship is promoting as a key context for optimal child development, resilience and well-being of all family members. Um, and we in the purpose of saving the time, I will stop with this, what we actually use. Maybe interesting point that tomorrow we are going to launch as a part of the Parenting Month, uh, the online webinar for parents, uh, first online webinar for parents uh, with, um, with the topic of why play is the most desirable, desirable and fruitful context for bonding, learning and child development. So we hopefully uh, spend some uh, quality time tomorrow with parents from, from our country on online setting, similar as we did today. And, and maybe you can share the links in the chat box. I can ask Ivana to share and also all of you if you have links to Halo Beba and all these apps that you are using to support families. Joyce, what did you do? Is something similar like Mila and Given or there was something special in Kenya? I think it's, uh, yeah, uh, Midline Given have given a, a pretty good um, idea of the alternative measures uh, during COVID in place of in-person meetings. We were able to develop um, online resources that we shared out that were supporting families. So we developed some open source materials that have been shared within the ECD Action Network uh, platform. They're, they're available to all. We put together resources to, to provide guidelines for families on how they can continue um, supporting kids to learn at home and uh, different sorts of resources that are available to support the family and the child. And, uh, so for the trainings that you normally do, we had to 
rely more on virtual platforms. And uh, yeah, our key learning there was that for the ones that target policymakers, it wasn't, you know, it's not, I think uh, virtual training is not a very effective format, uh, form of training for policymakers. So, but we, I mean, we still were able to carry on some of the activities while, uh, <clears throat> you know, to the extent possible. And especially one of the ways to deal with that was to target more the technical people within the ministries rather than to work directly with the most senior, you know, the ones who are directly responsible for guiding development of technical um, documents within the county governments. Those are the ones we work with um, more virtually than um, the very uh, senior level. In general, to increase capacities, IT yes. capacities like, like given and Mila was mentioning, but since I talked with three, all three of you in advance, I know the secret that you don't want to share it. And that's the uh, secret I'm about going doing, to count that. <laughs> and doing play for parenting under the tree in the so field I'm going to in the yeah. Uh, so in terms of the frontline workers, <clears throat> the support basically in terms of ensuring everybody's safety, both for the workforce and for the families, was to have um the, the sessions outside. So the home visits were conducted outside. So uh, that the counseling session with the caregivers was done um, outside the house where there is space and, um, you know, the kids, you know, there isn't, there is room to observe the, the social distancing. And that's really important, especially uh, in our urban settings where there is <clears throat> informal settlements where there isn't enough space within the house you know it's a little shack and there isn't enough room uh it helps a lot that you know the the observation of the kids playing and the parent or caregiver supporting that playful um, interaction was done um the support uh, by the community health volunteers was done outdoors and so it helped a lot to both maintain safety and to um, support the caregiver to continue. And, to and not to give up. So, so I think, and this, like moving to the, towards the end, I think that's the message. I hope you agree that you just don't give up a program, you integrate program in what, what is doable. And what I like, what Mila said, it requires courage to think a little bit out of the box. So thank you all for your participation. Thank you for your, your patience. Can I see like, ah, 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 <laughs> how do you feel now? Please go to the chat box. You have, uh, you have uh, email addresses of, uh, our panelists and our colleagues from Lego, you have some links. So if you have additional information and we are not going to leave before we play again. Come on, Jama. Just to stay with this feeling of joy okay. and play. So there's gonna be some people um, who can't turn their cameras on, um, which is fully understood. We're just going to imagine you doing this, okay? And for everyone else, if you can put your cameras on, please put your cameras on because we're going to finish with some yoga. So chill us out. Except it's not usual yoga. This is going to be eyeball yoga. So are you ready? Um, and what you need to do is, I've got my instructions here. Um, can you please... Turn on your cameras and, and, and actually take me off the spotlight. I'm just going to take me off the spotlight. Yeah. Can we do a view, gallery view? So put everyone on gallery view. There we go. Is everyone, can everyone do that on your view? So up in the corner, there's a little box and it says view. If you do that and then press gallery view, then you can see everyone. Who's you want to control us. With, yeah, I'm basically going to hypnotize you. No, I'm not. Um, it's going to be some, some fun. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start with a sun salutation. So roll your eyes up, up, up to the sky and hold it there for a minute. And then down, 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 look down along your nose, stretch those eyes and then to the left. 
And can you roll them over the top to the right? Can you cross them? And now you've warmed up your eyeballs. Can anyone do a face of um, a frustrated colleague? Can anyone do a face, an eyeball face of a fed up teenager? <laughs> That's great. And can anyone do wiggly, can anyone wiggle both eyebrows? And can anyone wiggle one? That's beyond me. I'm going to look around the screen. Oh my goodness, Monica. That. Look at Monica's eyebrow. Do that again. That's amazing. That's definitely kind of a proper eyebrow yoga. So um, I hope your eyes are feeling a little bit more loose after staring at the screen for two hours. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for playing along. It's a bit silly, but it's uh, a bit different. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you feel well. Uh, we will share with you recordings. We will share with you all additional information, also links and, and uh, emails. And let's do, can I do something for the end that I love to do? Can we all put our hands like this? Turn your hands like this and then say, great job done. We all did a great job today. Thank you all and hope to see you again. Bye.